to you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I hope I can do this justice. I've been madly scribbling notes as I've gone along and I've cobbled together some slides. Uh, so this has been a bit live throughout the event, obviously with uh, trying to present something of a summary. Uh, so I'll just share my screen and uh, hopefully that will come up. Um, hopefully that's there for people. Uh, so, um, I'm going to try and present some, some of the key insights that we've heard today. We've heard from lots of people uh, who have demonstrated some really fundamental principles. Um, and those principles, if we can grasp them, I think could change uh, could change everything uh, for a city like Sheffield. Uh, sadly, I feel a lot of these principles are things that um, the kind of governments we've had over the last decade are just never going to grasp. Uh, so I think one thing that comes through for me is that um, we have to look at how to uh, remedy the deficits uh, that come from the government strategy on a local footing. And that's um, hearing from everybody today has certainly given me a lot of hope about that, about the strategies that people um, are able to implement. Uh, and if we can achieve something more joined up across the city, uh, whereby um, our council and citizens are truly working together, I think we can uh, achieve something. Uh, I've noted down some of the key points that have come out of people's talks, um, illustrating what's wrong. I'm sure we're all aware, really, of, of what's wrong. But hearing some of the detail about where the system does go wrong, where people have felt uh, let down, uh, where they've been um, sure of the kind of help that could really make the difference for them, but unable to access it, where people are leading projects and they have a great impact, but it's not joined up with everything else. Um, so some of these uh, key points, I hope, are things that can be taken forward um, in a more holistic strat strategic um, view by our local authority working with people. Um, the final point there I really want to uh, emphasise that like, I feel local authorities do get trapped in this cycle of managing uh, cut after cut after cut uh, and I don't envy anyone in that position of managing the budgets and deciding how resources are spent but I think um, again engaging in a wider network of citizens who really are the specialists on what's needed and often how to provide it uh, can make the difference here. Um, the main barriers I perceive from um, what people are saying today, uh, time is an interesting one because of course we've seen during the pandemic in the last year, uh, periods where people have been furloughed from their jobs and become suddenly time rich. Um, and uh, the kind of time that people have prepared um, at the drop of a, a pin really to put into helping their neighbours um, in a very basic way, just shopping, collecting prescriptions. We saw all that through our mutual aid networks uh, that were created across the city, um, really in the blink of an eye. Um, so that, that resource is robbed from us by uh, the current uh, climate of work um, and is something that we really need to look at how to reap back uh, that precious resource of time. Um, the other points there, I'm sure, are pretty obvious to people. What do we know? What people have told us today? What do we know uh, from, our, from experience, um, from uh, people running projects themselves that are really successful, from people being uh, users of centralised services that really don't work out well for them? Um, so uh, I think main points to draw out there are that our citizens really are the best experts on what, on what we need. They're the people who know what's needed. They're the people who see it and experience it themselves uh, and hear it from their neighbours. Um, and we have to get past this frustration that centralised services just don't cater to the actual needs of, of most people. Um, I'd like also to emphasise here that um, societal participation must not be limited to the able-bodied. Uh, that was one of our first speakers, you know, who said... Um, that uh, they felt completely hindered by a disability and unable to work uh, and then um, 
a society project, if you like, a community project. It happened to be a protest um, uh, brought her back into circulation in a way that she couldn't have anticipated at all. Uh, we mustn't divide society into the people who can and the people who can't on the basis of disability. Um, you know, we we all have abilities, uh, and I think that's a massive mistake. If um, and it tends to come from from top down administration that there are people who can't and and they're somehow cast out of society. When citizens and communities are empowered, I want to draw on that as well. We've heard from uh, numerous speakers today uh, about the empowerment that's needed. Um, it's time, it's money, it's recognition, and it's underpinning uh, people's confidence to get going with the project and to ensure that it's sustainable. Uh, and then we start to see immediate and real measurable benefits. And as Brian pointed out near the beginning, and Brian Fisher in his talk, um, those benefits really are measurable. Um, and uh, on, on average, a pound spent brings back a three pound return uh, in terms of health, well-being and reduction in spending in other sectors. Um, what do we want for Sheffield? This is really where we're getting to the nub of it for us. Um, so we've heard how uh, having communication between the town hall and people is really important. Uh, that's maybe something that's become um, less possible through uh, over the last decade, I would argue, through cuts, uh, meaning that there are literally fewer staff in a town hall. Uh, there aren't there isn't the personnel to uh, to facilitate what what's probably seen as a luxury. Uh, really, but we have to make it a priority, not a luxury. So I think we need to keep just politely knocking on that door uh, and making sure that that communication channel uh, process does get opened up uh, and facilitated. Very interesting talking about community coordinators because that's really a small spend for a council um, and uh, a big return, as we've heard from the speakers. I won't go back over it all, but we, you, you all heard the, the benefits of uh, community coordinators who have their fingers out into uh, neighbourhoods um, and uh, and help to uh, to feed the ideas um, back into the uh, well towards the the purse holders, I suppose. Um, Citizen-led, community-located, rights-based, it's a big ask, um, but it's really not too far away from us. It requires a, a mindset change uh, in the right places, but I, I, I do think this is perfectly achievable. Um, and it's also something that can be encouraged from Westminster, uh, probably not by this government, but certainly from our opposition benches. Um, and uh, we do have uh, Liz Kendall with us today, who uh, I hope, you know, is someone who um, will really champion these ideas from communities like Sheffield um, and uh, and just keep, you know, keep thumping away at that tub in Westminster on our behalf. We need things to be more citizen led, more community located, more rights based, not one size fits all. It just doesn't work. Um, nothing about us without us. Nobody's actually uttered that phrase, I think, today, but it's one that's constantly uh, on my mind when um, I, as a, I'm not disabled, I'm not particularly ill, uh, I'm not a user of any statutory services, um, and yet I have the audacity to talk about how other people might want those services to be shaped. Uh, the most important thing for people like me is to listen to other people, and we've heard that today. One minute, sorry, Ruth. Thanks. Um, the rest of the points there, I think, uh, things that various speakers have all agreed on. Um, we do need investment to come back into municipal services. Uh, and I want to just reminisce about the days of youth clubs and uh, going swimming for 10p uh, and having free access to tennis courts uh, and all that. And I want to add to that a modern twist, which is why can't Sheffield be a place that provides uh, mun a municipal broad fast broadband to every household uh, and um, somebody did indicate that that would make a huge difference to people who are cut off otherwise uh, from a lot of society um, I'll whiz on uh, do we have the political will this is a takeaway uh, for anyone of a political mind here today uh, and I'll include myself in that as a potential councillor in the future um, I preach to myself do we have the political will to do these things? Uh, are we spending public money ethically? Um, 
to my mind, not do a screen share, take this slide away, have a think about it. Um, we're paying money to private shareholder companies across the city for, for, for care, uh, care home, for care delivered in homes. It's, that's not right to me. We need to look at that urgently. Is every penny being spent to the direct benefit of citizens? That also needs looking at urgently. Can we become a city where every worker in the care sector is well paid? Are we going to tolerate care workers working for these private companies who are paid below or just on the living wage and they're going to a food bank once a month? Also not good enough. We're robbing our own citizens uh, in, by, by accepting this system. So we need to look elsewhere. Um, that's the end of my slide. Um, there are myriad other points I could make, but I know we're running out of time. Uh, and I know that uh, Simon hopefully is going to pick up some of the points about money because the big question is always, well, how are you going to pay for all that? Um, so I guess it's over to Simon next. <laughs>